Hey everybody, Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com. I want to give you an update on the Ruins of Perdition. We have started to print. This is just, just the beginning. We have so many people who have backed the Ruins of Perdition Kickstarter. We're very excited for it. I'm going to take you downstairs to the Mini Wargaming Forge or to the print farm of the Mini Wargaming Forge in just a moment. But I wanted to show you just kind of the, the funness that is that uh, we're, we're starting to print all of the components. Because there are so many orders, we've found that the most efficient way to print them, of course, is not by order, but by component. So you can see we just have tons. Uh, these would be the uh, straight walls. And then these ones look like, yeah, these are the L columns, so the the 90 degree columns, and this looks like more straights. Yeah, so just we're just printing tons of these because these print really well overnight. Because they're so tall and thin, we can decide if they are 15 hour prints or if they are like two day long prints if you load it up with everything. Same thing with the, the walls. We just got them and very satisfying. You get to see how well this stuff packs down, just how many walls there are there. We got five, 10, 15, 20, 40 walls fitting in one of these trays. It's just glorious and beautiful to behold. And so just having the different kinds, and then when it comes time to actually pack the orders, uh, which of course won't be until after the Kickstarter is over and we've done the pledge manager and collected shipping and addresses and everything like that, then we can just go through and very efficiently pack orders. So this is what they kind of look like unpacked. So they're just all thrown into a box unceremoniously. This would be a half table. So you can see it takes up what you would imagine would be about half of one of these boxes. And then this is a full table. And so the, the good news is we were able to figure out how to pack them even tighter in a way that they should arrive in one piece or in lots of pieces, obviously, but not broken and to keep the shipping costs as low as possible. So we haven't charged any shipping during the actual Kickstarter and we're trying to figure out exactly what those will be. We have estimated shipping costs that are there and I'm hoping that we can get those even lower than what it says there. So it's hard to say, especially depends where you are in the world. But the nice thing is when you look at this, it packs down really well. And um, because we are going to ship them by, the, by surface, which means by boat overseas, we can get the price down really, really low for people who are in the UK or Europe or Australia, or wherever you happen to be that is not in North America. And then the price, of course, to North Americans is even better. So I'm really, really happy about that. And then of course, we've got a bunch of these statues as well. But this, is, this represents the first couple percent of what we need in order to actually have everything fulfilled. But the nice thing about manufacturing in-house is it means that we can start printing right away. Now the only uh, real hiccup is that we have to order tons of filament. I'm gonna be ordering at least half a ton, about 500 kilograms of filament to be able to start to work on this. And that'll take a little time to come in. So in the meantime, we're just ordering whatever we can from the local distributors. But by ordering in bulk, we can get the price even lower and really be able to pass on those savings, hopefully in the shipping prices and in future campaigns as well. So it's a lot of fun to figure out the efficiency. So come with me. We're gonna go downstairs. Uh, I think Caleb's taking lunch right now, but we can take a peek into the messy print farm that is currently being reorganized because not only do we have to keep up with the orders that are currently coming into the forge of movement trays and bases and miniatures, but uh, we also need to prep so that when the Kickstarter is over and you guys, and all the money comes from the funds from Kickstarter, of course we can fulfill the STLs like almost instantly. We're just gonna do that through my mini factory, no, no, no problem there, but that we can um, start shipping almost right away to backers. We're gonna try probably to go in the order that they came in. It's not gonna be perfect because it'll be the components that we print as well. But we actually ordered eight more Bamboo Lab P1P printers. There's six of them here, the other two are in there. And so when I say I recommend the P1P, I put my money where my mouth is and I buy these. So if you're looking for a printer, if you are going to 3D print your own terrain, this is by far, at least right now, the best printer for, your, for the money that you're going to spend. Of course, you can spend a lot more money and maybe get a better printer, but I'm, I've got like 40 of these now and they're printing nonstop. Like we've had like 30 of them printing nonstop for a year and a half. And I think we have to service one or two of them and that's it. The rest of them, oh, it's, it's, been, it's been wonderful. So I definitely recommend these. Go to miniwargaming.com p1p to buy one through my affiliate link so I can get a little bit of a kickback. 
But as you can see, I'm not telling you because I have an affiliate link. It's because I really do like them. So we come in here, it's gonna be a little noisier. Caleb's hard at work, getting ready to organize. It's even warmer. The moment I walk in, I can feel the temperature jump up. And we've got our rows and rows of P1Ps. Now I know there are print farms out there that are bigger than ours. Because like I said, we're only gonna have 40 printers in the end for the FDM side and then like another 30 over there for resin. But um, he's currently just uh, getting printers going for the current orders that we're doing. You can see right there, you can see what a uh, entire bed full of just one of the walls is. So those work really well for over the weekend prints because they take a little while to do that many walls altogether. So we're able to get a lot of efficiency when it comes to labor costs because we can set them to run for like overnight or for you know, over the weekend as well. And so we've got all these printers here. We're gonna be cleaning up all of this up here and setting up even more printers. Nice and safe, we've got good sturdy um, ladders so you can just walk up and you can service these printers just like you would on the first or the second level. So nice and sturdy and just be able to change the filament. Although we are experimenting with a few things. So this is a kind of behind the scenes what we do. Cause obviously we are super uh, concerned with efficiency. When you start to scale up, little efficiencies multiply a lot. When you're doing this at home, whatever. You have inefficiencies, your printer sits dormant for a week. No problem, it's not really costing you any money, but it costs me money to have things sit dormant. So whenever printers aren't printing, which is why Caleb is frantically working right now to turn these printers over to keep them moving, that is time that the printers are not making any work and any money. And that's obviously a problem. And so we're experimenting with little things like uh, we 3D printed a mounting to put the, you're all right, don't worry about it, to put the, the filament above the printer. And that's how it seems to be working well, right, Caleb? I love it. You love it? I think it's great. It's not causing any problems in the loading Cuts or- Cuts the time down in half easily. Of, oh, I mean like in loading, like it going into the, is, there's not any problems there, right? No, I've had zero failures, complete, great, everything, every time. <laughs> The other thing I want to experiment with, I need to find a good supply of this, is switching from one kilogram to three kilogram rolls. And so the reason I need a good supplier of this is because we go through hundreds of kilograms every single month. And so I need to have a place where I can guarantee that I'll be able to get them regularly. And so I'm gonna be looking into that and hopefully I can maybe even be able to cut down the price a little bit by buying them in bulk and buying them in larger rolls. But I know also that the one kilogram rolls are more popular, so that drives your price down as well by having a higher supply of one kilogram rolls because that's kind of your at home price. And it's also what the printers are designed to hold on the back. They don't fit the three kilogram rolls. They're wider and they're obviously bigger. And so, but and if we mount them at the top, all of a sudden we're changing printers over three times less. And when you have 40 printers, that's a big difference because a printer goes through a kilogram of filament on average every two days, if it's running nonstop. And that means you go from every two days replacing 40 printer's worth of filament to every six days, which is roughly a week, that's a huge difference in the time that Caleb has to spend switching them over and it leaves him more time to just print off orders. It means that he can manage more printers, which keeps the cost down, which we can then pass on to making sure that we have a good profit margin so that you guys can benefit from that as well. Uh, Cause all that needs, to, we, we try to pass on as much as we can. Obviously we have to have our margins to make it all worth it, but obviously the lower we can push this price the more we can push the upper price down as well. Or maybe even consider going to retail if we can get the price even low enough to allow for distributors to buy it at a decent price. So anyways, I'm going all over the place here. Caleb's <laughs> scooching by right there. Uh, but we got a lot going on. Uh, right now you can see we're printing a lot of movement trays because that's for our day-to-day -day orders. And then overnight we switch over to the gray filament and um, print tons of stuff for the ruins of British. And let's step outside where it's a little less warm. You can even see there's more walls, he hasn't filled up this one yet, so it hasn't gone upstairs. But uh, it's just tons of stuff going on. Anyways, whew, it's noisy and warm in there as well. The only, one of the efficiency issues that we're having though is all of these partial rolls. Because what happens when Caleb's about to print overnight, if a roll's at a half roll or lower, he could be concerned that it's not going to last the whole night. And then that's a lot of inefficiency as the printer sits there for a few hours not printing. And so he'll switch it over, but then we're left with a lot of these. So what he ends up having to do is throughout the day, feed them in and then have to change them over more often. So we're not quite sure what to do about that. If you have any ideas, leave a comment below. If there's, a, there's no current way to like spool them into something bigger because obviously you have to fuse 
or the one ends to the next. But maybe we'll get big enough one day that it'll actually make sense to have a machine that spools, fuses them together, and then continues spooling them into the one or three kilogram rolls. That would be pretty cool. And if we could do that, then we don't even have to buy three kilogram rolls. We could make our own. But that's when you have to go like super efficient. And when you're doing it from home, it's not as big a deal. Which reminds me, um, if you're watching this, I've decided I have a 3D printing terrain course that is totally for free. And you can go ahead and get that at the link below. So you just go and sign up, it costs nothing, and it goes through everything you need to know to 3D print your own terrain. And that way, if you do want to get into 3D printing, and you find all this as fascinating as I do, and you want to get one of these printers for home, just one of these printers at home, and you'll be able to print so much terrain. It's ridiculous. In just a matter of a month, what one printer can churn out more than you could possibly need is really what it comes down to. And then you can use it for all sorts of other fun products or projects as well. So check that out, link below. And then I hope, of course, anybody watching this will consider backing the Ruins of Perdition Kickstarter to help support us to continue the, uh, making the vault or the forge as successful as it has been and allow us to grow even more carefully and cautiously, of course, so that we don't overextend ourselves. This, these are all necessary to be able to get everything fulfilled within about two to three months after the Kickstarter ends. So I was very careful about the, the number of printers. I had to calculate it to, to get it just right to make it so that we got it done fast enough, but not so fast that printers are sitting idle. Anyways, I'm going on and on as I usually do. So check it out. Go to miniwargaming.com slash perdition to check out the Runes of Perdition Kickstarter, or I'll put links below. And if you're watching this on our Kickstarter because you backed and this is in the update, thank you so much for your support. And we are, as you can see, working very hard to be ready to start shipping out as soon as we possibly can once the Kickstarter finishes and all the funds have been received and we have all of your information. Thanks for watching. Happy 3D printing.